God in heaven. What is good, everybody? Welcome back to another My Damn Toys video. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be diving into sort of a two-part series here. I figured, you know, with all of the buzz of, you know, new wrestling figures, there's so many different wrestling figures nowadays, right? We have, like, we have New Japan, we have AEW, we have WWE. I mean, we have so many different figures pumping out all kinds of different figures from different licenses and different companies that it's probably the best time ever to be a wrestling figure collector in this day and age right now. And I would say, you know, the two top, the top buddies, the big two, the ones at the top of the food chain have to be the WWE action figures and the AEW Unrivaled, at least for now. That is the two top dogs. I would say I feel like everybody could agree with that. And I did say this would be a two-part series because I am going to be doing not only WWE, but tomorrow or a couple days from now, I will be doing AEW figures. So today, guys, we're going to be covering my biggest issues with WWE figures in general or just my, my gripes about the figures you know, where they could improve, just different pet peeves and little things about these figures that I think that we could get better at if we, if, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I made a list. I'm going to go through it. If I don't mention everything, you know, I didn't spend like a, a whole lot of time on this, but I did take a minute to gather my thoughts on all of it, and I tried to provide some figures here that kind of get the point across of what I'm trying to say. And then if I miss out on anything, guys, you guys can let me know your problems down in the comment section below. Let's go ahead and dive into it. So starting out at the top, I absolutely adore WWE action figures, WWE elites, WWE ultimates, all of them, man. I freaking love them. I think they're amazing. I think they have so many great qualities and all the great qualities heavily, heavily, heavily outweigh the cons. But I did want to make this video just to get these things out there and see what you guys think. So starting out at the top, guys, let's go ahead and get into it. Let's start off with one problem. I think everybody owns a figure like this in their collection. I'm going to start off with the brand new WWE fan takeover, Adam Cole figure. All right, you're looking at it. Looks like a standard Adam Cole but you grid it out of the packaging and oh god in heaven why? The loose waist problem. Now, I don't think my other Adam Cole figures had this issue, but it's apparent that this one has it. Now, I feel like there are some figures. I feel like, I don't, I don't know the exact ones, but I know Triple H for a big fact. It's like that certain torso or, or what it is. I don't think the Ultimate Edition has it, but many Triple H figures that I've gotten in the past have had this fidget spinner waist, man, and I don't know what the deal is. I don't know exactly what that is, but it's very, very annoying. You know, there's a figure you're really hyped for, you're really excited for. You know, it arrives at your door, you're fighting it at retail, you that figure you've been looking forever for, you pull it out of the packaging, and then, oh my god, he just spins around and around and around. That is one big issue that I find. I don't think it's super duper common, but it definitely happens for sure. And I'll go ahead and add this on top. What about when the shoulder gets super loose? I've pulled figures brand new out of the packaging that have a loose shoulder. And after that happens, man, I mean, your figure is pretty much impossible to use as far as like posing or playing around with it, man. It's just, you don't want your arms and your waist just, just flailing all the hell around. Next up, guys, we have the pine cone joint problem. You guys already know what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about beautiful ball joints like this Rey Mysterio, which is beautiful. This is an excellent figure from head to toe. Now, this Finn Balor Ultimate Edition is an amazing figure. And I apologize for my voice again. God in heaven. <laughs> I apologize for my voice again. It sounds like it sounds like I'm chewing on eggshells or something. But the pine cone joints, if you guys don't know what that is, it's any figure that doesn't have the ball joints. It is these joints right here. Those joints right there, man, they make so many things like super hard to pose around and they make the legs super stiff. Like, think about how much better Finn Balor or Jeff Hardy figures would be if they were on ball joints, man. When they're on these pine cone joints, like they get real stiffy lip. Like, look at that. How they lock into place like that. I don't like that. We need to be able to pose it in different ways where it's not on this kind of kind of deal. I would love to see ball joints on, on everyone, which is something that AEW figures actually have. Every AEW figure actually has ball joints, which makes them very fun to pose around. They do run into their own issues, however, because if you do ball joints, sometimes if you pose them around or the, the ball joints are too big or too small and then you have these leg molds that don't fit correctly, you'll get these loosey-goosey legs. So we got to find a way to get in between the balance. Pine cone joints and ball joints. They have their pros and cons, but I think that, you know, we've come so far, I feel like we could do away with the pine cone joints at this juncture, but again, you could run the risk of having the loosey goosey legs. And I don't know which one's worse. Probably, probably the loosey goosey legs, to be honest with you, because this Elias figure won't even really stand. And I haven't even posed this guy around really much at all. I've never used this, I don't think, on a pig fed or anything like that. All he does is 
stand around in videos, and he's always been that way. So, loosey goosey legs and pine gong joints, which is worse. Would you guys like to see ball joints on all figures? Much like double jointed arms. I'm not going to get into the single jointed arms because we are in the process of moving away from single jointed into double jointed, but it is something I wanted to bring up. While I have this Finn Balor out, <laughs> While I have this Finn Balor out, guys, I wanted to mention the Ultimate Edition torsos. Now, I think anybody that poses these guys around will say that they do not like the Ultimate Edition torsos. I think Ultimate Editions would be much better if they were if they were just like Elites, except they had the more accessories and double-jointed arms. I think that would have been perfect. I know we're moving into double-jointed arms for all Elites moving forward, like, very soon, which is going to be absolutely incredible. However, these torsos just don't get an ab crunch, man. Like, this is him normal, and that's as far as he's crunching forward without bending over at the waist like you can do here, but there's not much of an ab crunch at all. I, I just, I don't know what it is, man. These Ultimate Editions are amazing, but I cannot stand the ab crunch, and I feel like they make them too skinny. I feel like the, the torsos are a little bit too skinny for my liking. You get a lot more muscle rippage, you get a lot more girth, and I guess build around a, you know, a regular elite torso, so I don't know. That's just some of the other things that I, you know, that I have a problem with. Another thing, ladies and gentlemen, is the wacky formulas we get sometimes. So if you guys don't know what a formula is, when I mean formula by WWE action figure standards would be, okay, for the formula for this Matt Riddle, we have a Matt Riddle head sculpt. We have our Macho Man torso, Kalisto arms. We have the giant Kurt Angle thighs. And then we have the Kerry Von Erich lower legs. So it's just the pieces of the figure that you put together. It's the formula to create this Matt Riddle. Just super odd choices. Now the Macho Man torso isn't the worst, but I think a Seth Rollins torso would have fit better. Now, that's not even really the big deal, but putting Kalisto arms on this guy, I don't know where that came from. I, I, I just don't, that doesn't make sense to me why you would use Kalisto arms when this man's arms are pretty damn jacked, and you could say, well, it still works. I mean, I guess it still works. It just looks odd, especially when you compare it to somebody like Seth Rollins or Dolph Ziggler when their arms are bigger, when in real life, those arms are pretty much similar, if not bigger than those guys. So, I think Seth, uh, Seth Rollins formula for Matt Riddle would have been perfect. Just color the lower legs in skin tone and give them some new lower legs. I knew that they would probably end up using these, you know, the Kerry Von Eric lower leg, but I feel like it almost gives him cankles, which is a big issue for me. But he's not the only one they've done this with. They've given Baron Corbin Kalisto arms, the AJ Styles torso. You know, it's not necessarily a wacky formula. It's just not a formula that I really care for. And I feel like they give Dolph Ziggler the massive jacked arms that are like twice this size. You know, give him Finn Balor the Daniel Bryan torso. Angelo Dawkins being absolutely gigantic. I mean, there's a lot of different examples, but Wacky Formulas is something that I think could be better with the Mattel WWE action figures. Another thing is loose interchangeable hands. While I really enjoy the interchangeable hands, they're amazing. Thank God we have them now. I think the next step forward in improving those would be making it where they don't get loose. I find a lot of pick fetters coming to me and saying, hey, what can I do about loose interchangeable hands? Like, you interchange the hands once or twice, and they're super Super duper loose. I don't know how exactly you could fix that in a design process, but it would be really nice to figure that out if we could get, you know, our hands to be a little bit tighter. Like this one's fine right now because I haven't really switched them in and out a bunch of times, but after you do it a little bit, man, they definitely get way too loosey goosey. And last but not least, guys, this is one that uh, I, I freaking, I can't stand this formula and I can't stand, I wish they would retool this. This is one of my biggest pet peeves, man. The John Cena torso, not torso, the John Cena lowers like this with the long jorts and then this shoe mold. We got to redo this shoe mold. I don't know what we can do, but we got to change it. I've already like glued and Mod Podge the joint so it won't fall over. But I can't tell you how many times any figure that has this mold right here, any figure with this mold over time, unless you like glue it or you Mod Podge it, it is going to lean forward and it'll knock your whole damn shelf over, man. They get loosey-goosey, especially if you fed with them or something. You can hang that up, bro. They're going to be totally F. It makes it where they can't even stand. They'll just lean forward and face plant over and over. That is one of my biggest pet peeves. we got to retool this John Cena shoe mold. I don't know what we can do, really. They put it on the Elite 78 R-Truth. They put it on multiple John Cenas. We're about to get the new uh, Decade of Domination had it. The new Top Picks Elite John Cena is also going to have it. And it's been a 
around since like Elite Series 3, so they've had it for 10 years. I think it's time to improve this mold and change it up a little bit. Not to mention that they're always on the pine cone joints and they're super stiff, so that is something that I would improve as well, but outside of that, man, I mean, these WWE figures are, there he goes, look at that. Outside of that, though, man, I mean, these figures are amazing. I absolutely love them. Again, I wouldn't collect them if they were garbage. I think they're incredible, and I will be doing this for the AEW figures as well. If you guys have any other pet peeves or things that you find annoying or things that the Mattel figures could improve on, please let me know down in the comment section below or just some problems that you experience with your WWE figures that you think needs to be addressed. Please let me know, but that is pretty much going to do it for these problems here today, guys. Let me know what you guys think down below again. Before we get out of here, guys, let's get into our random shout-out. And for this random shout-out, it's going to go to SpongeHub, who says, Trey, go buy it. Me still looking for Dolph. I'm trying, Brad. I thought that was a pretty good comment right there. Huge shout-out to SpongeHub for that comment. If you guys missed our ranking of all of the Elite Chase figures, we ranked every single WWE Elite Chase figure yesterday's video. Definitely go check that out. It sounds like my voice sounds a lot better now. God in heaven. But that pretty much does it for today's video, guys. Thank you so very much for watching. And I'll tell you what, Bradley, when this John Cena figure is just standing there with its crappy shoe mold and he decides to just lean forward and you already know what you did, John. You crossed the line, I've been